What's up, Devil? Sensei Tutum here with the in-depth EOS look for you. Got those likes and retweets this week, so excited to get get into this in-depth look for you guys. We didn't get the the love last week, so just the members got an in-depth look, but uh, you guys just got the EOS dollar look last week, so there's a lot more information that you're going to see in this video. Members, stick around. Uh, we're going to start with this EOS Bitcoin pair. So when we first started doing this back in early February, mid-February, I'm not sure exactly when, we had two counts. And, uh, you know, believe it or not, guys, shocker, we're still on those two counts. And in fact, really not much has changed. Uh, you know, you get your macro roadmap and you don't necessarily, you know, what changes within within it, you know, this count is always going to fluctuate. You, you can't predict exactly what's going to happen between here and here. You just predict that this is here and that's going to be there. So we've had some changes along the way, but it looks like what we're getting is a sharp style of correction. Um, which actually does give us some credence for this uh, this count, the teal count, uh, which is the primary and has been. But um, we need to get deeper to feel good about that. So let, let's talk about it. The primary count has been that we have a completed A wave from the all-time high. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, making a B wave now, and then we go down for a C to finish the bear market. Um, and then the alternative, I would call the Uber Bega Mare, Be Bega Mare, uh, mega bear uh, where we have the one two three working on four going down for the five then you got a big three up and five more down now how long does your bear market last if we're on that red count could last what it could potentially last what three more years who knows could kill eos we don't want that so i really don't want the red count but if it were to happen you would get a long term you know you would get this fifth wave down completed and then get a long three wave up and people might think the new bear bull market's on but you wouldn't make new highs and then you go down to potentially death who knows so we'd really like to eliminate that and in order to do so well what do you got to do you got to cross the price territory of wave one territory of wave one haven't done that yet but where are we so let's measure and it looks like kind of unfortunately that we're in the high probability area for a wave four right now now, you might expect it to get deeper than that with this sharp style of correction. So we could keep going up, uh, but, you know, wave four could turn around here. And, of course, that doesn't eliminate this this teal count. It just doesn't, doesn't help it out if we were to turn over now. In a perfect world, so, again, right now we're kind of in the high probability area for this wave four. Um, and then, but in a perfect world, we would correct all of this to put in a B wave. And hopefully get up to this 50 because, you know, you get to the 382, the 50 for a high probability B. Of course, you go, you know, if this is a zigzag or zigzag family of style here, which it does appear we are on, you could easily get to the 786, though. Doesn't seem like we have close to that amount of juice to get up here to the 786. But if we could potentially somehow get to this 50, that would be feels good, man, because we would get rid of this lo one low. We would come into that price territory and eliminate this red count. That's what we want to do. We want to eliminate that red count. Doesn't mean we're not going down for new lows. I don't see this as a completed correction here. And this, of course, doesn't look like an impulse off the low. You know, it's definitely bullish, just not an impulse. Um, so we need to finish this and go in for a new low. And this is the best case scenario in my mind to do that. So that's what we're shooting for. And the reason it's one of the reasons it's always been the primary. And I, you know, I haven't gone super in depth or at least in the past. And I'm sort of taking these more and more in depth as we go. Um, got kind of in depth on the Bitcoin video last week and it was well received. So I'll, I'll go ahead and try this one out on you guys. Um, one of the main reasons that I've liked this teal count the most is because a lot of times when you measure Fibonacci relationships between wave relationships, you do it and they actually the they come out in percentages, not necessarily straight price extensions. So if I measure this, um, you know, one to three wave, it's kind of out here in no man's land. You you would expect to get a one six one eight uh, for a typical uh, wave three extension. Um, of course, we do hit the one two seven two to a T, but you know that's not really a high probability. But it does happen a lot, and it looks like it happened here. But taking that aside, one of the things I like to look at is percentages because often you will see percentage relationships, uh, price percentage, and, and, and this happens a lot on the larger scale counts. And of course, this isn't that large. It's only since back in what is that, early eighteen, late seventeen. Um, but you know. So we'll switch the log real quick, though. Um, 
of course, if this was years, it would give even more credence. But if we measure this, this wave one was like 43, 42%, something like that. Don't want to get too exact. What was this? And so, and what are the likely one to five relationship? One to one, right? So if you just measure out Fibonacci price, this doesn't even come close to one to one. But if we take the percentages, this is like 46% to like 43 two and a half, 43%, pretty close to one to one, right? And then what's the likely wave relationship for wave three? Well, it's 1618. So what is 1618 of, um, what is 1618 of 42%, like 67-ish percent? Let's see, 66.05. Hmm, pretty interesting wave relationships, right? And then not to mention, I bet we could throw a channel on it, although I haven't done that. Um, on this log, we could go ahead and throw a channel on it. And let's see, two to the four from the three. Doesn't channel perfectly, but channels pretty damn well. Um, you could go from the one, if you call that too steep, that's roughly the one, and then it would be perfect. Uh, you know, for channeling, Elliott wave channeling, those that don't know, uh, if you're going to project the fifth, you typically go from wave two to the end of wave four, terminus of wave four, from wave three. Now, if wave three is too steep, to get a reliable channel, you would go from you could potentially go from wave one, which if we do that here, we hit it to the tick on the on log scale, of course. But I just like this wave as a completed impulse down um, more than I like it as a one two three. So that's just me. I'm hoping for that, but we really want to get. We really would like to invalidate this, so get a little bit more up. And with the Bitcoin count, because of course Bitcoin <laughs> Bitcoin dictates everything, and with my you know slightly leading primary on bitcoin we could meander slash go up meander upwards and if this does the same thing if this turns into some sort of ending diagonal if there's like a w x y and then this would be a diagonal so five three five we could do that and that's what i'm pulling for so let's go take a look at the dollar pair and see how we've changed since we've started well this is what we've had since we began the doing these EOS bit uh, EOS videos um, on the dollar pair. We had a W X Y X Z, potentially Z that we were putting in. However, look at that. We have violated not by a bunch, but we have violated this X wave to be for to make this a Z. I'm sorry, not X wave. This B of the Z. It would be A B C. So this count is now invalidated. Now, why did we have it like this? The main reason we had that count, because a WXYXZ, you know, whether it's a triple zigzag or a triple three, is an unlikely count. It just doesn't happen that much. But why did we do it here? Because we had a three wave here, pretty clear three wave, and then correction out of it to the upside, and then a three wave here. So, you know, and this is all down in a bear market, you're thinking corrective. Well, turns out, wasn't the case. Well, what did we have? And I've been saying all along that EOS dollar and EOS Bitcoin are quite similar. Turns out they are still similar, at least what I have here. So let's take a look. So here's the count I'm rolling with now. That we had that first three wave is actually one, two, three. And then this three wave is another one, two, three, but of an extended fifth. And the extension, the extended sub wave of that extended fifth happens to be the first wave, which is pretty rare. So you know, color me, color me uh, surprised because I did not expect that. And it looks like that is probably the most likely count at this point. I would love to see some alternatives, but this is the best I've got so far. And there's a couple of reasons I like it. But one of the most pri one of the biggest reasons I like it is that so when a, when one and three are similar in length and three is the longest here, but it is similar to one a little bit over the one to one ratio, that's when you expect to have an extended fifth wave. Now, of course, when you have an extended fifth wave, the most likely sub wave to be extended is the fifth, but it can be any of the three. In this case, it turns out to be the one. But if we measure the, uh, let's see, if we measure this extended fifth wave from the terminus, from the beginning of the extended fifth to the terminus of the four, it is split in the golden ratio at the four and right at the terminus of the four, which is the most likely, uh, typically impulses are separated by the golden ratio at the wave four, whether it be 618 after for wave fifth of all of, you know, zero through three, or the fifth is 382 of zero through three. 
just you would have 618 on one side or the other, if that makes sense. Um, hopefully it does. If not, say so in the comments and I'll draw something up for you guys so you can see what I mean. But that gives me credence to this extended fifth count, that we are dividing that extended fifth wave by the golden ratio at the terminus of wave four. I hope that makes sense to people. But it does. The, it should if you're uh, if you're pretty high level, Elliot. It should make sense. And if not, like I said, make put comments, and uh, maybe I'll do a quick two minute Twitter video explain that. Um, so where are we now on the dollar pair? And of course, you know, Bitcoin, same same. What are the options? Um, so well, let's zoom back out real quick. Same thing as far as if this is a completed impulse down, we would need to correct all of it. So we would want to get hopefully between the three eight two and the fifty to call it a good. Um, to call it a good retrace to give us credence to this count. Um, so we haven't come even close to that. Let's go ahead and throw the 236 on. Of course, it doesn't have to. We're just talking probabilities, guys, and we haven't even hit the 236 yet. So really, in order for this count to have play, you know, and I could be wrong, the last count, the last dollar pair count I have is wrong, but I could be wrong. Um, but in order for this count to play, we would really want to get uh, up to the 382 potentially. And really, when you see an extended fifth wave, what what happens after that? Well, you see a swift retracement to the area of wave two of the extended wave. Well, that starts right, actually, actually that starts right at the 236. So we really could get to the 236 and dump over and still be in a high probability uh, wave B. But I'd still like to get up to this red dotted line personally, more close to the terminus of that wave two of that extended fifth. Because we had the flat after this extended first, which you do expect to see also after an extended wave, you see, see flats. Um, see sideways style which is a flat would cover that um quite often so another thing giving credence to this funky count but done a lot of work on it i think that's what we've got so really we do want to see more up and we have a few different options one option we have is that call it the mega mega bull b is that we have got a one two working on this big three four going up for the f five the fifth they will end us they'll find a support at the terminus of that wave two which so at the after an extended fifth wave you expect to find support at least at that you know swiftly to the area of wave two of that extended fifth to at least find support so this a would end to find support there and a lot of times the correction ends there but not always um so then we would come down for the b and then up for the C, maybe to make a 50 retrace of everything, potentially up to $12. Maybe we only ever get up to, you know, who knows? Maybe you only get something like this and we get up to 10. Who knows? That's the mega, mega bull B count. And then we have two others. We have the potential for this wave here, which I really think is an impulse, but to be a zigzag. Let's just say it could potentially be a zigzag. If that were the case, we could have a W for the red count, X working on Y which would mean this Y would be in at this gray three, which would put us into that two, three, six, and that area of that wave two. So we could keel over there. Uh, and then of course, there's also the option that this is just an A, B, C. So C would end at the three, but the wave relationships, you know, this being so big compared to this, I would say that that is your third most likely of these three. Now, of the W and the Mega Bull, WXY and the Mega Bull, which one do I favor? It's hard to say. Um, Got to see what happens after we break out of this. We were So what we were looking at is to see if we thought that this was going to be a three wave. And I d it does look like we are in a three wave. That's why we have this base trend channel here is we've broken up out of that. Um, looks to me like we're probably in since my update this morning we have sort of confirmed that or not confirmed but it looks better that this is potentially was a flat so three three gonna put in five down to this four and then go up for a fifth so i would say that leads us to that doesn't really eliminate any of the three counts compared to the others but uh it, it at least lets us know that we're in, on track for this to be part all part of an impulse where this gray three is a three and then we go up for this fifth. So yeah, I guess it would, I guess it would uh, sort of get your WXY lower probability if this is a three because one, two, yeah. Cause this would be a B and then that would be a C. So yeah. Sorry guys, doing this on the fly. Uh, th this now, if we are confirming 
saying that this is likely a three wave, then that WXY would be less likely. So taking that into account, as of right now, I would say these are your two front runners, although I wouldn't totally throw out that WXY. Um, and I think we get, you know, potentially get up to this area between, you know, 650 and $8 uh, on this, on this re retrace. And again, guys, after that happens, we're going to make new lows. So don't get too excited. If you thought, you, if you're thinking you missed the bottom, you can't get your HODL coins or whatever it may be, even if we don't make new lows, if you don't think we're going to test this low down here, you're crazy. This is crypto. We always, we always take a deep retrace. It's going to happen. So even if I'm totally wrong, Let's just say Elliot's complete shit and my Elliot's even worse. You're going to get a deep retrace. That's just what happens in crypto. Anybody who's been watching crypto long enough knows that that happens. You know, look at this. Even this on this super mega bull market had that huge leg up. Look, you got your spike down. You had to have your orders in. You had to be ready, but you got your deep retrace. And then you got up to here, you got your deep retrace. So don't worry, guys. If you're looking to hodl, you're going to get your chance. Don't FOMO. Likely. Very likely, I think we get, you know, I think we get down to the dollar range at some point. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, we don't have too, too much way to go. You, you get into the law. I would say we should work in log at this point. Um, yeah, we should get down sub dollar uh, potentially. Within, uh, there should be a one in front of whatever our low is. I should say that. Not that we all, and we already hit 150, but I'm starting to drone now. But essentially, guys, big big takeaway from this week is that on the EOS Bitcoin count, um, we're still no clarity as far as from when we started this whole thing. Um, I think that I'm leaning even more heavily towards the less bearish option. Um, and now on the EOS dollar pair, we've had to completely redo the count because we had the WXYXZ that has invalidated. And coming up into the very near term, to finish the recap, is that this does appear that it, we are in a wave three in relation to this wave. Um, so whether that means it's an A, B, and we're working on C, or one, two, and this is all a big three, hard to say, but uh, this wave does very likely seem to be a three. And we're putting in the four to go up for the five to finish the three, and then obviously... Once you finish the three of the three, you got to go down for the four and finish the five of the three or the five of the C, depending on which count it is. Um, all right, guys. I think I've covered it in depth enough today. Two, sign it out.